In this video, we'll look at the current flow, delay, and power associated with switching the values in a CMOS circuit. Here's a model of an inverter as we've considered it so far. Note that if we uh, flip the inputs from high to low, it looks as though the output is changing simultaneously and there's not any current flowing through the circuit. In the real world, we know that this isn't, po isn't possible uh, because if there were no current flow, then it wouldn't be burning any power. There's got to be something missing from our model. What's missing is the capacitance. Recall that the region under the gate of a CMOS transistor is essentially a capacitor. But there are also capacitances associated with the source and the drain. And if we were to add extra layers of interconnection, those would have capacitances associated with them as well. So in short, all of the inputs and outputs of a transistor, each of its terminals, have capacitances associated with it. So we can think of an inverter, um, all its connection points, as having capacitance. Here we've shown this as large lumped capacitors attached to the input and the output of the inverter. Here we take a look at the delay through an inverter as a result of the current flow of charging or discharging a capacitor tied to its output. Note that this capacitance is just a result of the natural capacitance in a CMOS circuit. As we've, at the bottom of the screen, we're graphing the input voltage and the output voltage in the inverter. As we flip the input back and forth, we note that the uh, output rises and falls slowly. Um, current is flowing on and off the capacitor while the output is in the process of switching, but once it reaches either 5 volts or ground, the current flow essentially stops. Note that um, the value of the output actually changes from a high to low when its voltage passes the midpoint, 2.5 volts, between the 5 volt supply and ground. This voltage is called the switching threshold, and the propagation delay is defined as the time that it takes for the output voltage to reach the switching threshold after the input is changed. As a further illustration of propagation delay, let's consider a uh, circuit composed of four inverters strung together in a chain. Initially, if we change the input, there's going to be a delay through each of the inverters successively until we get the final output. And the propagation delay through the whole circuit is the sum of the propagation delays of each of the pieces. Here's a simulation of the inverter chain where the NMOS and PMOS transistors are represented as active high or active low switches. At the bottom of the screen, we have graphs of the voltages of the input to the inverter chain, as well as the voltages at the outputs of each of the inverters, the voltages across the capacitor. When we switch the input of the chain from low to high, note that each of the capacitors charges is in turn, and it takes some time for the signal to propagate its way down to the end of the inverter chain. Note that current is flowing while the uh, capacitors are in the process of charging, that is, while the circuit is switching. But when it finally reaches a stable value of um, 5 volts or ground, or a solid 1 or 0, there's no longer any current flow. So this is the big advantage of a CMOS circuit over um, the earlier resistive switching circuits that we had, um, that they do burn power while they're in the process of switching, but once they reach stable outputs, um, there's no longer any current flow. And here we can also see the nature of propagation delay as the charging and discharging of capacitors.